Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I wanted to talk about what I've been reading in the month of April. Uh, outside of my buddy read with uh, Steve Donahue reading Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, I haven't been reading any other uh, novels. Uh, I've been reading a whole collection of things, uh, rather uh, works that feel maybe studious, but um, it seemed um, nothing was complete enough to make uh, single videos. I thought I would just show a whole bunch of stuff um, uh, to keep you up to date with whatever I'm reading. And the first thing is uh, this month I've reread everything that I have by Horace, and so I'll show this. Um, and I have the two Oxford World's Classics. The first one is uh, The Satires and Epistles by Horace. This is translated by John Davy. Um, the second one by Oxford is The Complete Odes and Epodes, translated by David West. Uh, this is a relatively new book. I showed it in a video recently. Um, How to Be Content, uh, a selection of um, uh, works by Horace, translated by Stephen Harrison. Uh, the Satires and Epistles, uh, Penguin Classic, this is translated by Niall Rudd. And then two by David Ferry, uh, The Epistles of Horace and the Odes of Horace. So I reread all of these. And then I also have um, Horace in English, which I'm still making my way through. And um, I've already talked about this a little bit, but the chief feature of the book is it's um, showing uh, the translations of Horace um, uh, through the centuries uh, from f very famous writers like maybe Alexander Pope or Dryden. Um, but um, just write writers through the centuries and how they treat um, the work of translation. And the, the interesting thing is having the same uh, portions shown by different translators and um, how they choose to um, handle the translation. And I'm not entirely sure why I'm so um, enamored or intrigued by Horace uh, recently, um, but I find myself constantly um, wanting to spend time with this uh, poet and also uh, trying to understand why it's so fascinating. The, um, the, the, the epistles and um, in a lot of ways the satires don't feel like poems at all. And in fact, some of these translations, the Oxford's, uh, the, the two Oxford editions that I have, um, flesh it out into into actual prose. And the, the epistles read like these um, letters that he's uh, writing to friends. Some of them are written uh, uh, directly to uh, other people. Um, the, 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 sat, the satires, we get this sense of almost like meta poetry. There's poems where he's talking about uh, how he hasn't written the national, the great national poem, or why he's not writing lyrical uh, poetry. Um, very personal, um, behind the scenes or commonplace uh, thoughts or ideas. Uh, that there's um, a poem that's like an argument that he's having, I believe, with uh, a servant about how the thoughts and ideas that he's expressing in his poetry doesn't match uh, his own uh, behavior behind closed doors. And uh, the poems are very conversational, but also philosophical. He's um, giving advice in, in a very friendly way. These are, they feel one-on-one, um, -on -one, but he's giving advice on um, 
how um, how to live a good life. What 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 is there to value? Should you be spending your time um, just making money? Uh, should you be uh, worrying about your social status, your position within society? And he he elaborates in in a very unpoetic way. Um, I can't read or understand. I can't read uh, Latin, so there's like this mystery of um, uh, how 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 it's expressed in its original language and how much I'm missing. So the the book Horse in English is just really interesting to see um, how different translators. treat uh, the, the poetry of Horace? Are, are they trying to show how it really sounded in Latin? Uh, are they just trying to get the sentiment across? Um, it's just really interesting to me. Um, I read uh, the Aristes plays by uh, Aeschylus. Uh, it's these three. It's um, Agamemnon, the Libation Bearers, and the Eumenides. Um, something you can read in a day uh, or uh, maybe a play each night so three three days um, I, th I thought about making a, a video talking about it as a whole um, I feel like I'd like to get a little bit more uh, a better understanding of uh, some points that um, uh, you don't necessarily need to know to read and enjoy the book but some context that would um, be helpful to me to uh, talk about the, uh, the, the book, the uh, the play. But uh, fa fabulous, uh, the uh, fa fabulous uh, tr trilogy uh, by Aeschylus. Um, and then I uh, I read I, I don't have I don't have a physical copy, but I read um, um, that poem by Chaucer. It's uh, Troilus and Crescendes, I, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it's it's also set uh, at the, around the same time as the uh, play um, uh, by Aeschylus in the period of the Trojan War. Um, and I read uh, a prose, uh, an English prose translation of Chaucer, and um, I actually also got an edition of uh, the Neville Coghill uh, modern translation um, of uh, Troilus and Crescendi, however you say that, which I which I want to uh, read read that too, and then see um, how I like it. I I, I loved the, the the prose rendition, but um, for for some reason it, it feels just a little bit off reading. Um, not so much reading Chaucer in translation, but reading it uh, into prose. Um, I do think that the prose translation um, will give me a lot of help reading uh, Neville Coghill, and then maybe at some point I can read the, ori read the original Chaucer, which I've also been reading uh, portions or selections from the Canterbury Tales, and I have the Neville Coghill um, Penguin edition of uh, the Canterbury Tales, and then the original, um, the original Chaucer, which is also a penguin, and I. Uh, it's extremely helpful re reading something that's a little bit reading a modern ad adaptation uh, of Chaucer, and then to go and read the original. Uh, to have an idea of what what's happening, um, to be able to uh, understand fuller sentiments that are being expressed, and then to read the original, uh, I guess it's Middle English, and some things that I love is uh, how so many words are so similar, but maybe slightly um, sp sp uh, spelled slightly differently, or just there's something a little bit off about the words, and just these little differences add up into this uh, 
really foreign feeling. Like I'm, I'm reading, of course it is, but um, it's it's this strange feeling of being like so close to something that I can read and then still alien. Uh, but what one of my goals is uh, to be able to read and enjoy uh, Chaucer. Um, I, I, I feel that there's this uh, th there's been a benefit. I, I've been spending a lot of time with uh, Chaucer through this past year, and um, I, th I think there's noticeable differences in my uh, reading comprehension because the the act of reading uh, Chaucer, um, really having to spend time uh, with each word, each uh, line of poetry, each sentence construction um, makes me have to really appreciate the act of uh, reading in a way that uh, reading um, uh, any modern book you can kind of take for granted the fact that you understand all the words on the page so it's been very helpful and fun uh, I don't know why but it's enjoyable to me and then um, the last thing is I've been reading um, portions. I've been I've been kind of um, um, loping along through the Metamorphosis by Ovid. So a lot of this is um, very old, and then uh, Latin oriented or Greek, um, and um, it's good. These these are a lot of uh, writers that I always want to be spending time with, and this has been. Um, just a, a, a great month uh, digging into um, some some writers that I know that I enjoy. I, I like the Greek dramatists. Um, I've read the Metamorphosis um, and, and, and and enjoy this sort of kaleidoscopic uh, collection of um, uh, stories that have a thread. Uh, running through them in in this one. Um, Horace has been a relatively new find and I am loving it. It reminds me of um, when I started falling in love with Coleridge or Wordsworth, um, wanting to go back each night before bed um, and, and spend time with these poets. And uh, Chaucer, which is still a project, early stage project, but um, I, I don't think there's going to be too much effort um, to get to a point where it's uh, readable and enjoyable. Um, so these are all the things that I've been kind of reading uh, outside of my read-along um, with Steve, uh, with Bride's Head Revisited. Um, not, not, I didn't think any of it um, would, would sustain a single uh, video, but um, so now, now you know. <laughs> Now you know what I've been reading. So um, let me know what you think, what your thoughts um, about anything that I said or the books that I mentioned. Um, I'd be interested to know. And uh, thank you for watching and take care.